Next, we look into chapter number four, NAPT and EZIP. So let's look into NAPT implementation. Now, the make NAT does not translate port number. It belongs to no port address translation. Remember, early on, I mentioned we have a keyword called no PAT. In this mode, the mapping between public and the private address is still one to one, all right, which cannot improve public address utilization. So just to recap, static means that we have one to one, even though the computer shut down, it will still be reserved. Dynamic, NAT means that we still have one to one. Improvement here is when the computer shut down, then we can reuse the uh, public IP. Whereas if we are using NAPT, we can use port address translation. So the improvement over here is NA stands for network address and PT stands for port translation. So this is where we have NAPT. It translates both IP address and port number from multiple internal hosts to one public address in the address pool. In this way, one to N mapping between public and private address is implemented, which effectively improves public address utilization. This is what we want to achieve, which means that we can do many to one mapping. And for them to do that, instead of just using IP to IP mapping, they also do IP to port mapping. So let's look into uh, how this is being achieved. As you can see, we still have the three machine uh, in the previous topology and our uh, IP address on internal is still 192.168.1.254 and the public IP is still 122.1.2.1. We have an address pool here, which is in this case, we have uh, 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. But instead of just using the IP, you notice that we're also using what we call the port number. For example, if you can see here, we have 192.168.1.1 colon 10321, which is our private IP, is being mapped into 122.1.2.2.1025. Now, if I have a second uh, internal IP that is uh, using the NAPT, you notice that this time they are using a different internal IP and the port address but this is where it's become interesting. You notice over here, the public IP is still 122.1.2.2 and here you notice that the port number is 1026. As its name suggests, NAPTs, they are using network address translation with a port translation as well. So they are combining both techniques together. With this, uh, the advantage is I'm just using a single public IP yet I can use multiple internal IP to do the translation. So this is the NAPT concept. So let's look into the mechanism on how we can achieve this. So on the first step, right? so we have our source IP with the port number is being sent to the net server. Okay, so the NAT select one of the public IP, in this case it's selected 122 dot one dot two dot two so this is step number one so this ip address is being sent together with the port number of source 1025 port number with the ip address of 1221.2.2 sent to the destination when destination reply you notice that in step number two it generate a net mapping address which record the address and the number see what will happen here is the server is reply back to 1025 and is being mapped into the NAT. And once it's replied back into 1025, it know that I will map back into 192.168.1.1. And this is the port number that is originally uh, I sourced from 10321. All this information is in our NAT server. And you also can see from here, if I actually using 1221.2.2, but when I reply to 1026 here, you notice my IP address is not 1.1, but is 1.2. So this is how NAPT work. And we also have step number three and number four. Basically, it's the same. 
So when we are replying or when we connecting from the server back into the net NAT, so you can see that here we have a reply which is mapped back into our internal host. So the keyword here is our NAT mapping table in our router. So for us to configure NAPT is also pretty easy as compared to the static and dynamic. This time, we still have our NAT pool. So we are going to create NAT address pool. You notice that they are creating only one pool. So we have our ACL, okay, just like the dynamic. Then here, you notice that we are using net outbound 2000 address group one. So this is the NAPT configuration. Let's look into another way for us to configure this. We call easy IP. All right, so easy IP and NAPT is about the same, but there is one slight difference. Okay, so let's look into easy IP. Easy IP translate both IP address and transport layer port number. The implementation of Easy IP is the same as the NAPT. The difference is Easy IP does not involve address pool. It uses an interface address as a public address for NAT, which means that in the NAPT, I can assign another public IP. Whereas for Easy IP, whatever IP address that is on the interface, in this case, I have the external interface. This is my internal interface. Internal interface is always the same. The external interface uh, will be used as the address to go out. Easy IP apply to this scenario where public IP are not fixed. Example here will be the IP address that is uh, given to you dynamically. If you are using uh, ADSL or using a service provider where you subscribe a dynamic IP, so you cannot create a pool. So since you cannot create a pool, then you have to use the PAT or Easy IP. So this is where I mentioned here, if you are using dynamic IP or PPPoE dialog. Okay, so uh, let's look into the configuration because the theory on the NAPT and Easy IP is identical. So let's look into the Easy IP configuration. So based on this topology, it's the same topology, I want you to take note on the configuration. There is no address group, okay? You do not need to create the pool. Now you just have to say that, what is the ACL? Uh, in this ACL, which IP address is allowed to translate? And then I just go to the interface and I just have to specify net outbound 2000. That's it. This is so simple. This is how you can configure Easy IP, okay?